Hello everyone and welcome back to our fourth monthly multi-make. Now for th those of you who haven't joined in with the monthly makes before or the multi-makes before, these are like sketch ideas where we're getting more than one card out of our sheet of designer paper. So it's a way of extending the amount you get from your digital kits as well. So to help with your tips and tricks to cut down on the amount you're printing and the ink and things like that. Now this is what we're following. And to get your hands on one of these, to get hold of this, you need to head over to Facebook and join my group Paper Crafting with Paul. Uh, you'll find a link in the description below. So just click on that link and join. You just head to the file section and you'll find this. And you can print it out. I know a few of you are um, printing the, each one out each month and then keeping them in a the file. And as always, I'm going to be showing you a generic one. Now, all the multi-makes are five by seven cards, which means you can just make the card bases, whatever colour you want, just using any of your sheets of card. And you only need to buy one sized envelope for all those Christmas or birthday cards. So you can just have a big stash ready to go for those last minute things or when you need lots and lots of cards. So the first one, I went to Nitwits and got the piece of cake kit. Again, link in the description below. So this is called piece of cake and it's a female birthday um, kit. Now, usually I just make one of these generic ones up before as my mock, but this time I haven't done it ahead of time. You're actually going to see me put these two together in the video. So that at the end of the video, once I've done the Christmas ones, don't turn off, you can watch me do these ones. We can see the beautiful pinks and blues and butterflies in here. So piece of cake. Uh, my Christmas ones this time were Christmas critters. Nice bold images. And you've got your traditional Santa type images, but also your fox and there's other animals in the kit as well. And they come in these lovely square toppers as well. So this one's really, really quick and easy to reproduce because it's very easy cutting out. So, as always, I've got an album in my Facebook group, in Paper Crafting with Paul, ready for you to drop your versions. So have a think about what papers and toppers you might use. Head over, grab the PDF, grab all the supplies ready, and let's get started. So to make this monthly multi-make, I've already printed my PDF from Paper Crafting with Paul. So head over to the Facebook group to get your copy, or you can just follow on here. But I do find having the paper copy does help. Then for the first card, the Christmas card, as I said, I'm going to be using the Christmas Critters. And as usual with my multi-makes, we're making the most out of one sheet of our papers by printing two on one page. Now, so all I do with this is going into my photo printing options, choosing the two decorative papers that I want, and printing both side by side then onto one sheet. And then we'll just be swapping over. I've also printed off a couple of the toppers from the kit. So they come just like this. I didn't have to layer or anything. And because they had these spotty backgrounds, I chose this spotty. But they are different. This is quite an organised dot. This is just a random polka dotty type paper. So I've got that's why I chose these two, because they match the backgrounds of our toppers. And because they're digital ones, I was able to resize them to the size I wanted. So in this case, around three inches square. But obviously it's up to you what size. So I said mine are three inches. And because they were digital ones, I was able to print off two. And on this one, I just printed off the top, leaving this Polaroid type background. So I've got his face and his hands and the candy cane. 
And then with this, I cut out the fox and the present. So I'm making my own decoupage from my kit. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them yet, but I also printed out a couple of the flowers. Now I didn't have much space, so what I did was I cropped them down. So I didn't print off the whole flowers and I wouldn't see them anyway, so they they can be tucked behind. Not sure if I'm gonna use them, but just to show you, you don't have to cut out the whole image or print off the whole image um, if you wanna save space and ink and paper. So let's get go. Oh, and I've also got my two pieces of black cardstock because I'm going for black for my base this time. So let's put them aside and bring in my instructions and I'll need my trimmer. So as we've done in every multi-make so far, we're making our five by seven card blanks. So I'm cutting my cardstock at 10, by seven and because we're multi-making I'm going to need two so again ten by seven so the reason I make my own blanks is they can be any color I want and I can match them to my project and every multi make is five by seven so that I can just buy one pack of envelopes so at Christmas time then when we're bulk making we can just save some money that way so here's a card blank oh sorry so it says I scored five which I've already done and we're going to just fold in half. Because it's black cardstock, I'm using my Teflon tool by Cool Cats because it doesn't leave those nasty white marks which your plasticky ones might do. So there we go. Our two card blanks. Let me just score them a little, um, burnish them a little bit more just so they lie a bit flatter for me. Yeah. Okay, so there's step one already done. So now we can move on to step two, which is choose two pieces of patterns paper, which I've already done and printed. And it says to cut both of these at six and three quarters by four and three quarters. So that's just a quarter of an inch shorter than my card front. So I'm just cutting off the white and then let's cut it. So it was seven inches. I said to go back to six and three quarters. So I'm just going back a quarter of an inch. Five inches would be my card front. So I'm going back to four and three quarters. That's my green done. Let's just cut off this one. Now, because I've got this polka dot one, I'm not worried about um, the orientation at all. But later on, on my next one, I'll show you what you need to do if your paper's got writing or an animal like a butterfly or something, which you'll need to keep going. Okay, so step two, done. Now we're going on to step three. Cut a vertical strip down the left-hand side of each pattern's paper at half an inch. Now, just to make it easy, I'm going to do step four as well at the same time. Then cut another strip off the left of each piece at one and three-quarter inches. Now, I'm going to be using this uh, right-hand side to cut mine. So if I had a directional paper, I'd have it upside down because I'm cutting it off the left-hand side. Or... You can cut it this way, but I'm finding that's quite hard because I haven't got as much guidance across the top. So if it's directional, place it in upside down. And it says to cut it at half an inch. So that's why I do it this way, upside down, rather than half an inch this way, because it can wobble a bit. So half an inch, and the second one was one and three quarters. So this is my two inch, so I'm just coming in one and three quarters. 
because the way I'm going to be using them is this way around, which is why you'd need to put it in upside down if you've got a directional paper. So you need to do that with both. So half an inch and one and three quarters. There we go. So before I move on to the next step, I do like to ink my edges. So for this one, I'm gonna use my black soot distress ink. And we're just gonna get rid of that white core. And it also helps us when we come to line them up later because it'll hide any imperfections in our cutting or gluing together. So it's up to you how deep and things you want to go. If you want just a faint or if you want a thick line. So this step, again, as I've said in all the other months, is totally optional, but I think it just does help you hide, hide some things and also just finishes off your card a little bit more. I think last month I did show the difference between one inked and one uninked. And it was quite a difference. Two more to go. Last little bit. Here we go. So I've inked all my edges. Not that I need to put them back together. Let's see if I can. Let's do this way then. Yep, and that way. So there's our two pattern papers, cut and inked. So we've done step three and four there. So step five now is swap the central vertical strip pieces of each pattern with the opposing pattern and glue the new formation onto the card blank. So you can see here, we've got the two light greys and the dark grey. We're swapping that dark grey piece over. There we go. And that's our base. And it says to glue onto our card base. So I'm going to get my glue. It's my Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear. I've opened up my card just because I find it just lies a bit flatter, which makes it a little bit easier to glue down. I can place them here. not too much glue, otherwise it does warp our cardstock. Bring my Teflon tool. So this makes it flat, but also spreads that glue underneath. Just a tiny bit of glue around the edges. And a bit down the middle. So now we've got this to put up against it. And then the final strip. So there's our first card blank. Let's open it up. Let's lay it on. Just so we've got it's centralized. 
There we go. There's the large piece, the central. This little thin half inch strip as well. And see what will happen is with that black inked pieces, it'll hide if you've got any gaps or if you've gone a little bit wonky, it'll hide that nicely for us. Whereas if we'd left it without the black, like you would see this black line here with no other black lines. But because there's black shading everywhere, it sort of masks it. Okay, so we've done our two card blanks. And it's just step five now. Add your topper and add any extra embellishments you wish. So we're going to place it here over this larger piece, just going over that central one. Now, just because I've put hexagon here, doesn't mean yours has to be a hexagon. It can be any shape we want. And in this one, we've got a square. So I'm just going to ink. Now, this is going to be quite tricky. I'm going to try and ink just the square, not Santa, because I don't want his beard and things being black later on. But I do want it to stand out a little bit. Now, instead of inking, if you've got some black cardstock left, you could back it onto some black. There we go. So because he's got the green there, I think I'm going to put him... No, I think I'll stick it here. And it's the fox on the red. Which way? Let's go this way. Or do we lose that? Actually, let's add some ink to the candy cane. There we go. Just so we can see the candy cane sticking up. So that's our um, toppers ready to glue on. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing your Christmas cards, you can trying to keep costs down, you could just stick them on. The idea of the multi makes is to try and build up our Christmas collection and our general use collection. So I could just stick them on flat or I think what we'll do, let's stick this one on flat. So if you're multi making for your Christmas uh, stock, you could just finish there. But if you want to go just that little bit extra, I said I have printed it off as a little decoupage sh sheet. And I'm going to try and make that candy cane stick out just because I've chosen that, that green. So let's put some foam pads behind. But you could just use some very thin ones like I'm using here. And that way it would still go through the post without having to pay extra because of thickness. Let's get some on to the candy cane. And I want some on the top of the candy cane. And take off back in and let's hover over and stick it down so because I've stuck it down now I can't 
glue them under. So if you did want to put some of these, you'd need to do it before. But I'm going to use the foam pads and raise this one both sides. If I can get my foam pads off the sheet. And a few more because I don't want the centre drooping down. It's probably the hardest part of the whole card is getting these backings off. One more. So because I'm lifting this one now, let's move that one out of the way. Oh, I haven't inked. That was really close. So I'm just going to avoid his. Uh, top of his hat there, avoid that with the glue, uh, with the black. Here we go. Do we need this, do you think? I've cut it out, so let's go for it. I'm just going to ink the edge so that it actually shows up against the red and green. Well, this might be a chance for me to show you the difference between the inking and uninked one. So, there's the inked one. And there's the uninked one. So you can see with this one now, it sort of disappears into the red. And the green sort of disappears. But on this one, you can see a definite difference there. So let's stick one of these in. So sticking out a little bit too much for me there, so I'm going to just cut some more off. Just some glue off the edge. And let's stick it behind there. And again, I have got another one of the toppers. So not too much ink here now. Just wanted to have a little bit of a shadow. Make the scarf stand out and make the present stand out. And also what this has done is any white bits I had missed when I was cutting and they're still showing, this black now has hidden those. So it's a good way of hiding your fussy cuts. So let's have a look here. Got rid of that white bit. And again, let's Foam pad this up. Last one. There we go. So there's two cards now ready for my Christmas stash using the Christmas Critters one. But as usual, I'm going to make some general ones for the birthday stash, for children's stash. I think I did children's last time with the bugs. So this time I'm going to bulk out my female birthday cards one. And the reason I haven't done it this time is I want to show you a couple of things. I was saying earlier about our paper, if it had a direction in it. Here we go. So on this one, 
we have actually got the butterflies. So that's why when I did my first cut, I wanted to cut the half inch. So I put it in upside down. So when it comes back out, it's the right way up. And because I'm using a white card blank this time, black would have been a bit harsh. I've actually chosen some pumice stone. So it's a bit grayer than black. So it's a little bit lighter. And I've already done most of these. Just got this one edge here and a little bit on the bottom. Still white. Here we go. And again, we're just going to swap those middle ones. And let's move this one out of the way for now. Let's put the top back, back on the ink before I end up with a grey fingerprint, which wouldn't be the first time. So there we go. So here's number one. Number two. And number three. So I've made sure that all my butterflies are floating, uh, flying upwards. Now this one, I'm cut quite straight, but that's what's good about inking the edges is I can overlap it a little bit just so I'm making that even edge there. So there's our first blank and our second. Butterflies flying upwards. Roughly in place. And the second one. And here we go. So you can see how just going from one floral and one plane has made two very different looking cards. Get the pumice stone back. Now, in this piece of cake um, digi kit, we've got some fab toppers already made. Now, what's great about the toppers is some of them have even got empty spaces. So, if you wanted to put some word art, you could put some in and make the sentiment whatever you want. So, with me now being Welsh, sometimes I need some Welsh cards. I can type in Penblwydd Hapus and have a Welsh language card without much work. Mess a little bit on this one. I want to make it really dark. There we go. Let's get some more ink on this one as well. And then, I said, this is a very simple topper now. So what I'm going to do is try and show you another technique on how you can make your toppers a bit fuller without having to print off a lot of extra embellishments and things. So 
So I'm going to place it as I've got it in my sketch, just a little bit onto my central panel. So this one is going to go here. Again, I'm going to foam tape it up. Sticky hasn't come off the back of that one. There we are. Take off the backings. one here. So that one is quite busy as it is. So I'm going to leave that one and I'm going to bring in this flower arrangement here. Now in the kit this floral decoration topper actually comes with this extra leaf here with a very thin stem. Now I don't know about you but I didn't have the patience to cut out a very thin stem so I've cut it off as a separate item, cut off the flowers then together like so. On some of them then, I've even cut off the leaf to get just a flower. This one, I've just cut out the pink flower. So all from the same top, I just copy and pasted. So I have printed out four of them, but I've got all these different versions here and lots of the leaves because each one had that loose leaf. So again, I'm gonna just ink some up. And what we'll do is we're gonna build up the background. So that's quite large there. So I'm gonna keep that as a whole. Don't need to glue it all, just enough because I'm gonna tuck it under the corner there. Then we've got this extra leaf, so let's tuck it under. So because I haven't put glue all over, I can lift up and I can bring that over to this side. So because I put something top left, I like to put something bottom right. So let's do exactly the same. So I'm keeping the edges without the glue in case I want to tuck stuff in. So there we go. But let's keep going. So on this one, why not add a foam pad? Let's give it an inked edge as well, just to hide those white edges. And you could place it on top if you wanted here, but I'm going to place it, where did I say I was going to put it here? Was that looking a bit too samey? Maybe I'll bring it here, but it is higher up than the other, so we're making some depth there. Now my foam pads today are quite thin, so they're not as obvious, but that's what we're going for with the Multimix. Now, if you find it's too large to tuck under, what you do is you just trim it off, just cut it up. And now I'm going to, can we take it behind? Yes, we can. Let's take it behind there. And with this last bit, you can tuck it in somewhere else as well. So let's... Try that too. Let's bring it here. So one, sorry, there and there, that was from the same topper. So rather than having to 
um, cut two different toppers, cut them in half. Less work and makes your images go further as well. So we've still got some leaves. So we need another leaf here, I think. Let's have it coming over the line just for an extra bit of depth. Oh, I didn't ink this, I've inked it. Let's tuck this one under here and have a double. So I'm just extending that diagonal line this way. Got one more leaf. And I'm gonna place it up here because I got two. So let's make three up here as well. So then you've got three and three. So let's bring it down like so. So that's the beauty of not gluing the entire flower down. We can still tuck things underneath. So there we go. I said this time I've shown you how I've built both of them because I wanted to show you this technique here on how to extend your toppers. So a nice simple rectangle, a little bit of fussy cutting with the flowers, which you don't have to be too good if just cut it inside the thing, but taking your ink around hides it. So my two female birthday cards this month using piece of cake. Now I'll link to the kits below. So if you want to get your hands on these papers and toppers, just head below and click on the link. And then if you want the Christmas ones, you need to go and get the Christmas Critters kit, both from Knitwit Designs. So thanks for watching. And I'm really enjoying seeing the albums in the Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul, being filmed with all your versions of the monthly sketch. So remember, you can see everybody else's designs then and get your hands on this PDF. So please, as always, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button for me. It means so much to me. And click that thumbs up if you've enjoyed. And if you're going to be taking part, please write some comments below. Or just to tell me which of the kits this month you would probably use. Would you like the piece of cake or the Christmas critters if you had to choose one? Okay, so thanks for watching. And I'll see you all again soon.